Now we're simply tapped in one wire, tapped into the mass airflow, the signal wire. Now this is going to display everything. I don't want to see everything, so I'm going to customize this, deselect it all, and I'm going to look at the mass airflow in hertz. Now, I'm reading 2.4. I'm going to turn that into a graph. Now this is scanner data plotted as a graph. Explain the difference between this and lab scope data. Scanner data is not live data. It is similar. Instead, it is the data that the PCM is using for its calculations and control. Lab scope would truly be live. Now we're sitting here at idle, and whenever we activate a graph, it is going to show us what it has seen or is seeing. We're sitting here at idle, and it's showing a hertz of 2400 to 2442. But that's because that's all it has seen. We have not raised the RPM up. But our minimum value at idle then is somewhere around 2400. But let's see what happens when we raise the idle. Now why did the display change so drastically? It changed because the min-max reset automatically with the higher RPM. Now let me explain. Now we're sitting here at idle and whenever we activate a graph it is going to show us what it has seen or is seeing. We're sitting here at idle and it's showing a hertz of 2400 to 2442. But that's because that's all it has seen. We have not raised the RPM up. But our minimum value at idle then is somewhere around 2400. But let's see what happens when we raise the idle. Now as you look over the side, you see that it went down to 2272 and it went as high as 5685. So it changed the parameters because we changed the parameters of what it wants to look at. Now our minimum is 22, maximum 55, but we're reading 23.8. We're reading over 2,300 and some hertz. Oftentimes that's going to be converted to kilohertz, so you just move it over three zeros and be 2.3 kilohertz. Now I want to go back to the custom here, and I want to add to this our TPS. And I want to add engine speed. So now I've got three things that I want to look at. I'm looking at TPS, mass airflow in hertz, and engine speed. Now again, I'm sitting here at idle. I want to readjust these for a higher idle. Remember, I changed which data would be displayed. Every time you change the display, the min-max will reset, so be sure to raise your idle. Now as you look at this, and I'm going to pause it, and looking at this waveform, you can see that the TPS, when I step on the throttle and goes up, and then the air goes up as well, and the engine speed goes up. So all of these should be somewhat in relation to each other. If one of them is really different or have glitches, of course you'd want to check that out. I'm going to start this back up again now. So our hertz is about 2.3 kilohertz at idle. So a question here, what does that prove? Well it proves that the mass airflow sensor is reporting normally at idle, but what about above idle? Now the way to test this is we want to go up to 2500 for a few seconds and see what happens. So if I'm looking at my engine speed, I'm right now about 600. It's really hard to keep that exactly at 2500, 
somewhere in this range right in here, engine speed was about 2,500. And our mass airflow was reading, well, there's 4,000 or 4 kilohertz. So we were reading maybe 4.2 or 4.5, somewhere in that range. At the same time that we were about 2,500 RPM. Now here's a time-saving tip. Always look up the specs before you begin your testing, so you'll know if the results you're seeing are good or bad. Now under the frequency test, you can see that it's telling us the spec should be about 2.3 kilohertz at idle, and when you go up to 2500, it should be about 4.2, and that's the range that we were in. Now also when you look at the all data spec, it's saying that it ought to be about 100 hertz at maximum load. That's not 2500. We cannot generate in the shop setting here maximum load. So we're not going to see 100 hertz or 10 kilohertz. In the shop, we really can't create maximum engine load. To do that, you'd actually have to be out driving, lock it down into second gear, and redline the engine. That's not really diagnostics for drivability. That's why we have the spec of 2500 RPM and you want a, about a 4.2 kilohertz. Really this spec here of 10,000 hertz is more for like engine performance and putting a car in a dyno and you're trying to get maximum load. Now keep in mind this all needs to be seen in about a four second interval. The computer is looking for this all the time. If in a particular four second interval it doesn't see what it's anticipating, that's when it'll set the check engine light. Now we've been looking at frequency from scanner data plotted as a graph, but remember that's not live data. So how can we use a lab scope to view live frequency? Yes, but remember current is used to keep the hot wire at 392 degrees. The lab scope can't monitor current, but it can monitor voltage. Now why would we want to use a lab scope if we can already see data on a scanner and through the component test? Because a lab scope gives us the ability to zoom in and see things that we couldn't see without it. It gives us a lot more control. Now we look at our lab scope and we were set on frequency so we're going to have to change that. So we're going to choose volts instead of frequency and then our lab scope will suddenly display volts. We clear these screens off and you can see underneath that we're showing another scope pattern across this 10 second frame and it looks different. There's something there, it's, it's moving across and we can measure it, but we're going to have to take a little closer look. So let's zoom in again. Now instead of a 10 second pattern, let's change it to a 1 second pattern. In other words, it takes 1 second to go across this screen. But that's still not enough, so let's go down to 1 millisecond. Now it's taken one millisecond to paint across this screen. Now we can see what's going on here, but we want to be able to measure this. So let's take our trigger. We can move our trigger wherever we want, and let's put it over at the very beginning of this so that it will start painting at the very beginning. And now we can count. Now remember, frequency is what we're looking at. So as we look down here, it's on, it turns off, and then it turns back on. There's off. And it turns back on and this is one frequency it turns off turns back on a second frequency off and then back on point something so we've got one two point three frequency up across this screen now if you look down at the data it's saying four point five but that's because remember we're reading volts now on the left hand side if we want to count our frequency we have to count across the right side now I'm going to turn this back on and remember we were looking for a 2500 RPM too. So let's boost the RPM up here and see what this pattern looks like at the same time. So we rev the engine up and we're going to stop this so that we can measure. Our frequency, our trigger I mean, is still over to the left. So that's the beginning of the first one. So now as we look at these, we're going to be reading uh, frequency. So there's the beginning, our first frequency, second, third, and fourth point something. 4.4 .4 is what it's reading. 